It is a little bit different because a lot of it is from the point of view of the Kino, which is the sort of flying ball that roams around the ship. Oh, that's marvelous. And Eli's been using it as a means of making a documentary about what's happening. It's getting harder and harder to breathe as our very lives are being vented out into space. That is gonna get old very fast. This needs to be documented. No one's gonna see that. And a lot of people feel it's kind of intrusive and they don't really wanna participate, but he's been doing it anyway. Eli, I have nothing to say. The episode itself is a bit of a puzzle. The team goes to a planet and they find Aquino already there that they didn't send. Hey, guys, we only sent one Aquino, all right? And they realize the data bank is full. It's like the data bank is full and they take it back to Destiny, they're on this planet on a mission that hasn't happened yet. And a bunch of bad things start happening. This couldn't get much worse. I'm afraid that's a failure of imagination. <laughs> they start to wonder, how did this happen? Okay, what the? The Kino itself is a little different stylistically because it's really a departure from the way we're shooting the show, which is a very energetic type of camera work and a lot of cutting. The Kino, of course, requires that you cover everything in one shot, and that shot itself is often not as dynamic as the style of the show, so it's basically just floating. Its movement is often motivated by what Eli is deciding to do with the Kino. Eli, what are you doing? It becomes a challenge in terms of performance and blocking and the staging of how things unfold, and then the actors have to get it all right in one take. So you're looking for all the various subtleties of performance throughout one piece. The other challenge was essentially the environment. What I wanted to do from a look standpoint is very cool is rain at night. Always adds a real sort of sense of realism. It's got a little bit of a horror movie feel to it. It's supposed to be dark and scary, but it's kind of hard to find jungles in Vancouver. It is easy to find rain in Vancouver, but not in the summertime. And it's harder to get night because you have such a short window of time, you know, with daylight savings and everything. So we ended up building the jungle in a stage. We rented an entire stage, built a jungle in there, put rain towers in, and then did several changeovers to create different looks within that jungle. I think that turned out to look, you know, pretty cool.